All right. So since I have an audience, I'm going to go ahead and get started so that we can get through this so you know what to buy or, you know, some other options to buy besides Honda and Toyotas. We know that Honda and Toyotas sell because people know they're reliable. But since we all know that, then when you go to the auction, everyone is trying to buy those and the price is high and the bids are up and it's so hard to make a good profit with them. So I'm doing this video to give you an idea of some other options, some other vehicles you can buy that you can buy low and sell high that still have a great track record and that have a lot of profit. So this is uh, what I found in my own business and in working with students. So this is real data in the Atlanta market. I'm not sure how it will translate in your market, but human nature tells me that it'll probably be similar in your market. So you can take this information freely and use it as you will for your own profit. Let me go ahead and get this started. I use the slides to keep me focused and to keep me moving forward so I can give you all the information that I have for you and not get lost in the details, okay? So while the slideshow is starting, I am going to check to make sure that everyone knows we are live. Let's see. Uh, did I send? Um, okay. All right. So in 2019 so these are vehicles that were bought pretty recently and can yield the same results for you in 2019 as you're heading to tax season um, so you can buy these cars these five cars you can flip them and you can make eight thousand dollars in 30 days assuming you buy you know all the cars together um, and sell them together okay which is easy to do so today's training, I am doing this to help you to avoid wasting time and money on cars no one wants, okay? So I'm giving you some more options to buy. Know what cars to buy to make the most money the quickest. So these are cars that sell really fast for me. Know what cars sell faster, yeah, <laughs> same thing. Discover other cash cows besides Hondas and Toyotas, which I mentioned. And stay until the end so you can find out um, more information on how to be supported in making six figures selling vehicles, okay? So why am I doing this training? Well, I believe that this is my mission. I feel that I have a mission to help people to be successful and profitable entrepreneurs and to help them to build generational wealth for their family, okay? So... This is part of me living out my purpose. I'm doing this just for you to create wealth selling cars. I want to remove the mystery of making money selling cars. I want to give you as much free information as I can. I want to be your shortcut to success. I've already made the mistakes. I've already had some success. I want to tell you what that was like so you can use it and, and avoid the pitfalls and um, enjoy the success. So use my knowledge to help you succeed, okay? And I want to prevent you from failing like I did. I failed the first time around, in my opinion, because um, things didn't go smoothly and it was a rough time, okay? I don't want that to happen to you. So this training is for anyone who wants to sell cars for cash, for profit, um, for people who want to work smarter and not harder and not reinvent the wheel, for those who want to learn from someone else's mistakes and experiences so that you can make more profit quicker. Um, this is for all those who want to know what kind of cars to buy for maximum profit. And it's also for those who don't like wasting time and money. So who am I? I have been successful at um, many different businesses. And I say successful because I have learned a lot of lessons, okay? I've been in real estate before, which I have a lot of students who come to me from real estate, and I see that there is a logical um, flow to it because you're in real estate and you realize that the transactions take too long 
and you need something else that has some good cash flow. So you're thinking about the car business. Same, that was my same mindset, my same um, way of thinking. So you're on the right track to cash flow, constant cash flow. I made a lot of money my first year in the auto business, um, but it was really rough. It was stressful. I worked all the time. It was unpredictable. So there was no way to really manage my expenses because it was so unpredictable. Um, and then in two years, but I, I figured it out. I asked myself some questions about the business to kind of organize it and figure out a strategy. And then in two years, moved us from our small office to a big storefront. But in three years, our business crumbled. And I believe it was just the stress of the, um, the learning curve. Like the learning curve is rough. And I think it got to at both of us and it was just hard to recover. And so um, now that I've recovered, I see exactly what to do and what not to do. And that's what I pass on to you. So this is from the humble beginnings of my very first auto dealership. And we had the small office, which is in the upper left-hand corner. And then we moved to a bigger storefront. As you can see, we had um, a nice little entryway and we had our information print on the door. It was really a great feeling to progress in our business. So I want you to feel that feeling too. I want you to feel the feeling of growth and scaling your business to, um, you know, from the beginning to something bigger. All right, so enough about that, enough reminiscing and um, all of that. I want to get into five cars you can flip for $8,000 in 30 days. Now, again, this is actually actual car sales in the Atlanta, Georgia used car market. And I have to issue a disclaimer. I'm not claiming you are going to earn any money. Any earnings or income statements or earnings or income examples are only estimates of what we think you could earn. There is no assurance you'll do as well. If you rely upon our figures, you must accept the risk of not doing as well if you don't, okay? Disclaimer. All right, so first vehicle, uh, one of my faves, 2005 Kia Sedona. Um, okay, what happens to my next exit? Okay, so um, my estimate is that you can buy uh, Kia Sedona between 05 and 07 and still make a good profit. Um, I've bought a couple in those years and made similar profit. Okay. So that's where that advice is coming from. But that particular Kia Sedona was acquired for $1,295. Uh, repairs were $150 and it was sold for $2,700. And the profit was $1,255. Okay. That's some good profit. Why buy a Kia Sedona? Well, they are pretty reliable. Um, they have few issues and, um, and defects in their mechanics or in their engineering. And um, people tend to really like them. They can accommodate a family. And for those who like minivans and want minivans, this is a great minivan. To buy. I've had very few problems with them. The only problems that I've seen consistent with this model or with the Kia Sedona uh, is the suspension. Like the, um, so yeah, you just want to watch out for that. You want to make sure that you can test drive them. Okay. And if you have any issues, then you can replace those parts for um, relatively cheap. Okay. All right. So the next vehicle I suggest is the 2006 Dodge Caravan. Um, I like the caravans a lot. And I've had experience between the years of 2005, 2007, and really all, all the years of caravans. I've sold 2000 caravans, 2001, probably 2000 to 2008, actually, in the cash car market. Um, and I found that the Profit is pretty consistent as long as you get one with really good interior, okay? So that particular one in that picture was acquired for 995. 
$21 was spent in repairs. It was sold for $2,400. The profit was $1,384. Okay, so those Kias, those uh, Dodge Caravans can bring you some really good profit, similar to the Kia Sedona. Uh, why buy Dodge Caravans? Again, vans can accommodate a family. Um, I'm surprised by the caravans. They can have lots of bells and whistles, especially in the Grand Caravan or exclusively in the Grand <laughs> Caravan model. Um, and you can buy them wholesale for very little money. All right, so next up is another one of my faves, the 2004 Toyota Sequoia. Now, with this one, when I was getting ready to share the details about this, I see why people don't want to disclose free information because I hesitated to share this one because I like these so much. And I was thinking, oh, well, if I share, then I'll, there will be fewer for me to purchase. But that is thinking that there is lack. Instead, I think that there is abundance. So there is going to be plenty of used Toyota Sequoias for me to buy and for you to buy. We can share and still get lots of profit. So, um, but this is one of my favorites, okay? And I have bought them exclusively, exclusively in like the 2003, 2004, sometimes the 2005 Toyota Sequoia I can get for similar numbers. But that particular one was acquired for $2,925, $35 were spent in repairs, and it was sold for $52.50. Now, I know that that is outside of the cash car market um, in general, but the Toyota Sequoia cash car market is different from the general cash car market. The, the people, the customers who are in the market to buy that Toyota Sequoia usually have more cash on hand. So you can go retail to $5,000 and make profit of, you know, a good profit. Uh, this particular one, um, the profit was $2,290. So that was a great um, payday. Plus they are really fun to drive. They have lots of power. I really do enjoy the Toyota Sequoia. So why buy a Toyota Sequoia besides the fact that I am gushing over it because I enjoy them so much, but they can accommodate a family. They have a lot of room. Um, they can fit uh, seven, I want to say seven or eight. I can't remember right now, but um, comfortably, very comfortably. They're one of the um, bigger third row uh, SUVs, okay? So, and it's also for all your customers who want a nice SUV. Um, and they have lots of bells and whistles, uh, the limited edition, okay? Um, I like those better as bigger tires. Uh, most likely the interior is leather. And there are some other features that are really great about the Toyota Sequoia, okay? So have fun buying and selling you some Toyota Sequoias. All right, next up is the 2004 Mazda 6. Now, um, that particular one was an 04, as I mentioned, but I've sold 03 to 05 for around the same number. So if you notice that there's a pattern here, um, the used car market is not specific to the year. So like profit is not specific to the year of car. There are a range of years that can be uh, bring you similar profit. There are also a range of mileage that can bring you similar profit as well. So don't get stuck on buying a 2004 Mazda 6 because I picture, uh, there's one pictured here. There are a range, and I would say that range is probably even bigger than what I've listed here, um, 03 to 05. But to get you started, you can look for between 03 and 05, and these are some numbers you can expect, okay? I This one was acquired for 765. Now the repairs on this one, were higher. They were eight fifty. Um, the reason they were higher is because this car was um, a remarketing car. And if you are a student in the auto dealer business school program, I explain all about what a remarketing car is. Uh, but the short of it is basically there's a remarketing company that will take hard to sell cars or cars that um, have haven't been selling for dealers, and they will 
do some things and um, sell them, help to sell them for a higher price at the auction. Now, remarketing cars typically have higher repairs, okay? There are all kinds of hidden things in remarketing cars. And I talk more about what those hidden things are in the Auto Dealer Business School program. Um, so, but just know that be careful with remarketing cars, all right? So, like I said, the repairs on that one was $850. It was sold for $27.50 for a profit of $11.35. Now, why buy the Mazda 6? I mean, besides the fact that they're super cute and fast, <laughs> they are really cute. Um, I, my college students like them. Um, my single moms like them. They are really cute little vehicles, okay? Um, so it's for your customer. They're for sporty too. And for your customer who likes sporty, likes, you know, a little bit of something extra when they drive, it's a good car for them. Um, it can accommodate a family, a small family, if you buy the four-door. And Mazda has a reputation of being a reliable brand. So when people hear Mazda, they don't think many negative things about it. All right, last up is um, pictured here, a 2002 Ford F-150. Now, I've had experience between the years of 2000 and 2003 for around the same numbers. Um, the Ford F-150 is one of my faves too. They really did great with that car. You know, the commercial says built Ford tough. That Ford F-150 is definitely tough. This particular one was acquired for $1,725. The repairs were $100 and it was sold for $4,000 for a profit of $2,175. So why buy Ford F-150? They are pretty tough. Like I said, pretty reliable. Um, in my opinion, this is the best car Ford makes is that for F-150, in my opinion, they make good trucks, okay? Um, that's just been my opinion from what I've purchased um, that were Fords. Uh, the parts are pretty inexpensive and lots of them are available. Can accommodate a family if you get the quad cab. And for your entrepreneur customers, you get a pickup truck and everybody who wants to be in business or has a business, any kind of business really, is looking for a pickup truck. Well, not any kind of business, but you know, you can do so many things with a pickup truck. It's very versatile. So people are always looking for those. So if you can snag one, and it really doesn't matter what the interior looks like because they know that they're going to, um, they're going to rough it, rough it up anyway because they're going to be working in it. So don't get hung up on interior. Just uh, make sure you qualify your cars for reliability and go ahead and make the sale on that Ford F-150. So the total profit for these five vehicles was $8,204. So as you see, five vehicles can bring you a profit of over $8,000. So I'm always including some general rules for quick sales. And these are just general, okay, they do vary. But in general, I buy six-cylinder vehicles. Um, eight and four-cylinder vehicles are hard to sell unless they're specifically requested. Eight vehicles because of the gas consumption. Four or eight-cylinder vehicles because of the gas consumption. And four-cylinder vehicles because it doesn't have a whole lot of power. Four cylinders don't give you a whole lot of power. And people tend to like to feel the car move when they hit the gas, okay? In general, buy four doors. You're gonna sell to many more people because a single person will buy four doors. A person with a family will buy four doors, but a person with a family will hesitate to buy two doors, okay? Always buy a nice color. Uh, that is important, color matters. Uh, if you buy a strange color or a unique color, that car has to bring a unique customer. So it'll take longer to find that customer. So keep that in mind. Try to buy the fully loaded version of whatever it is you're looking at, the one with the moonroof, sunroof, uh, automatic this, upgraded, you know, sound, um, et cetera. Buy as close to 100,000 miles you, as you can get 
but this is a used car market. They understand they're getting high mileage vehicles. Um, so, you know, try to stay in a, what is a reasonable considered range, a reasonable, re a, which can be considered a reasonably reliable range of miles, uh, which has been my opinion to be between 100,000 and 150-ish thousand, okay? Uh, depending on the vehicle also, all right? But that's, these are just general rules. So buy with fewest imperfections as possible, unless you plan on doing body work. Um, people don't tend to like cars that have a whole lot of little dents and bad paint. You know, they want to look nice. They want to feel good. Uh, they know they can't buy a brand new car. Or they're not buying a brand new car, but they still want it to look nice and to be something they're proud of buying. So try to buy something for them that looks nice. All right. Um, no older than 16 years. So you get into your 1990 somethings. It's going to be a little harder to sell those. Um, stay under retail price of 3000 to 4,000 for quick cash sales, unless your market for that vehicle has more money. Like mar the market for pickup trucks usually has more cash on hand, especially if they're in business. Also your market for Toyota Sequoias tend to have more cash on hand, okay? So these are just some general rules for quick sales. Now, what's required to make these numbers that I talked about happen is specifically the acquisition numbers because uh, those cars were acquired for some really good numbers. Um, but what's required is to purchase from the dealer's auction where cars are sold for wholesale prices, repairs if are, if are needed, order user recondition parts from junkyards, be able to sell as many cars as you want. So if you're not able to retail cars to the public, then you have to stay within your state limits of however many per year. And that's not going to give you um, the profit you're really looking for. Utilize targeted free advertising to maximize profits and also have a system to get in quickly, to get started quickly, to work part time and to make that kind of money a month. So yes, $10,000 months. Um, well, we didn't talk necessarily about $10,000 in that example, but you add one more car, maybe two more cars, and you can easily see how you can get to $10,000 a month. And how much easier would things be for you if you were bringing in $10,000 a month, flipping cars, doing something where you were on your own time, and you were able to control your own destiny. Selling cars for part-time for $10,000 a month is pretty um, easy, okay? I hate to say easy because that word is not all-inclusive. It's pretty attainable is really what I want to say, okay? When people, when I ask people about it, and um, I mentioned that you can make $10,000 a month, then they are always wondering, like, is that really attainable? And truthfully, it is attainable. Cars sell themselves. Um, it's easy when you know what to expect and how to handle issues. And you only need to sell a few. Like I said, I mentioned five cars. But if you add one or two more, you're right at $10,000 a month. So what's that, six or seven cars in a month? And once you get a good process going, that momentum builds up and it is on, <laughs> okay? You are in the flow and it feels good to have the rush of those deals and that cash in hand. And it's a really good business. You get to meet good people. Your customers are nice. They enjoy working with you or buying from you. So it can be a really good business, really rewarding and if you're wondering how to get started, if you haven't already gotten started selling cars, or if you're wondering how to get started making $10,000 a month selling cars, then I have some information for you. The first steps, of course, is to have a blueprint for success. Like have a roadmap, have it laid out for you. Know what to expect, know it's first, second, third. So I want you to meet my first student 
Um, this is Glenn. Glenn had no previous auto business experience whatsoever. No mechanical skill, a small budget, a budget of only $1,000 for inventory, but he was able to buy right, sell fast, and brought in $99,000 in six months. I said to myself that if I could help make Glenn successful, then I could help make anyone successful because it's of course easy to make someone successful when they have lots of money to spend or they're a master mechanic or they're, they've been in the auto business or if they haven't been in the auto business, then they've had a family member, member in the business to kind of teach them or pass down some things. But without any of that, it's still possible to make a lot of money in the business. So with a mentor, he got help to get access to the dealer only auctions where you pay less for cars. He was able to know which cars to purchase and how to avoid lemons. He learned all about inspecting cars for reliability, um, got the cheap code, the cheat codes to navigate the auction and to find the best deals. What I mean by cheat codes is just basically the inside and out of the auction, the dealer only auction, um, help getting the vehicles repaired, clean and listed for sale helping how to handle customers, schedule test drives, and the paperwork to close the deal, how to implement revenue streams um, such as auto brokering, buy here, pay here, and salvage vehicles. Yes, your income when you're in the auto business is vehicle sales, but there are several ways for you to bring in vehicle sales, and we talk about those um, we, you know, we talked about those in, um, in helping build his business and he was able to start a new business with more time, more money and less worries. So what I did is if you don't already know is I put together what I call the 99 K in car sales report. It is all the inventory that my very first student bought and sold in six months to make $99,000. So what's in the 99K report? It is each vehicle bought and sold to cash in on $99,000 in six months. It was how it includes how much money was spent in repairs on each vehicle, how much was spent at the auction to acquire each vehicle, how long each vehicle took to sell, how much profit per vehicle, and it's real data from the Atlanta area used car market. So for all my people in the Atlanta area, this is directly for you. But for anyone else, it is still relevant because like I said, the cash car market is pretty much the same in many places across the US. So how do you get some how do you get access to the 99k report? You can download it at the website, www.autodealerbschool.com, or you can join the Facebook group, The Art of High Profit Auto Sales, if you haven't already, and it's there in a file. The 99K report, if you already have it, you might, you might be wondering, okay, I already have that report. I got that information. I think I want a little more information. So now what? I want a plan to succeed. I want some help in understanding how to overcome my personal limitations. You know, my budget is this. The time I have is this outside of my full-time job. Um, I do or do not have a partner. I do or do not have mechanical skill. So how does all this fit together for a successful plan a strategy to sell cars for high profit for me. If that is what you're thinking, then be sure to schedule a success strategy session with me to get your personalized plan for selling cars successfully. Okay, so you can do that in the group. I post that link often, or you can visit the website, www.autodealerbschool.com. And this is your plan, okay? Your suggestions, I give free information. It's the way I get to know you. And I include this quote at the bottom because I think it's so relevant. If you, plan, if you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. So get your success strategy plan in place now and book a strategy session. 
All right. So I talked a little bit about repairs and remarketing and like buying used cars or used parts or reconditioned parts. Or I mentioned a, a little thing, little things here and there about repairs. Some of my repair prices were low and I'm sure you were probably thinking, how were they that low? Like, how is it $35 to repair this vehicle? Um, what was done? Um, you know, how were you able to get it fixed for $35, et cetera? Well, know what to do about repairs, all right? So I have some ethical dealer shortcuts that save you profits, okay? I have tried a lot of different things in this business, and um, this particular information put together for you, I call auto dealer mechanics. And it is the shortcuts to repairing vehicles, okay? It helps you to save on parts and labor, to have more confidence in the vehicles you sell, and to minimize risk. So I know when you are, if you're already flipping cars or selling cars for money here and there, or already an auto dealer, I know you've gone to the auto parts store and I know you've looked at those different bottles and they claim to do this and they claim to do that. And you're wondering, do I spend the money and the time to see if it works? Well, the auto dealer mechanics reviews a lot of those bottles and I've used a lot of those bottles and I can tell you what I found that works. Okay. So this is truly an insider's report on how to um, still create or still have a reliable vehicle for your customer, um, but also to lower your budget for repairs so you can have more profit, all right? So if that is something you think you need to help you along the way, you can get that um, at www.autodealermechanics.com. Oh, oh, I hope I didn't. Um, okay. Uh, I think I <laughs> flipped the slide. But anyway, so you can get that at autodealermechanics.com. Uh, uh, it is being updated with some things that I've discovered recently. So you, it, you are getting the latest updated version for this upcoming tax season. So Go ahead and go to www.autodealermechanics.com. If you're a part of the group, then I will post the link there so you can um, just click and go and um, you know get that resource because it'll be a great resource for you. And as always, it takes a village. It really does take a village. It takes a network to be successful. There are a lot of different networks and villages online. And um, lots of different information floating around, lots of free information. Um, and if you like the information that's here, then make sure you stay connected for more knowledge, strategy, and psychology to be successful selling cars because it does take a little bit of psychological strategy. Then stay connected um, either via Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter is coming soon as I learn more about how to use it. Okay. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, I plan to provide more resources for you in this 2019 year. In 2018, I spent a lot of time working with students and learning more about what was needed and what to provide. And I feel like I've, I'm a better resource for you because of that experience I've had with them. So don't be afraid to ask for what you need. Don't be afraid to schedule the um, success strategy session. Um, I am here for this reason. You aren't bothering me. So if you need help, then reach out and I'm here to help you. All right. So look out for more resources and let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. Actually, let me check the comment section and see, because I've just been going through Okay, hey, hey. Yes, it will be saved. Hello, y'all. I do hope you're having a great day. Yes, thank you. We are having a great day. Yes, okay, so any questions for those who are still here? Oh, yeah, I got a really good audience. So I couldn't really see much about 
uh, what was going on while I was doing the slides or what the comments were. But now I'm in the comment section. So if you have any questions, then list them in the comment section. And if I end the video before you have your question in, I will always answer it later. Okay. All right. So I'm not seeing any questions. I'm going to go ahead and end the video and um, I'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye.